aired. So that's what's on the Millis community meeting. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pete Ruby. I'm the chair of the Finance Committee. Tonight is the 2nd of November. This is the pre-town meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order, and I'm going to invite the select board to call their meeting to order as well. Hi, I call the meeting of the select board for Wednesday, November 2nd to order. With me, I have Craig Schultz, the vice chair, and Ellen Rosenfeld, the clerk. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And we have uh, full attendance from the Finance Committee starting at my left. Uh, would you just state your name? And Patrick. Patrick Adda. John Stedman. Peter Underhill. John Lohr. Jody Garçon. Kathy McInnes. Sarah Reyes. Joyce Priardi. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm going to take one little uh, item out of order and invite uh, Ms. Lisa Harden, town clerk, to the microphone. Thank you. Hi, thank you, uh, Lisa Harden, town clerk. I just want to make an announcement to people in the room and the people watching that we have two more days of early voting here at the town hall, 8.30 to 4.30 on Thursday, 8.30 to 5 on Friday, and then uh, the election itself is on Tuesday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and town meeting is Thursday night, 7.30 at the high school. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. And so now we're going to start. Uh, we'll open the pre-town meeting. Uh, this is a public hearing. And we're going to go through the warrant articles. Uh, we're going to recap or synopsize our, the Finance Committee's recommendations with a little bit of uh, discussion. Um, really, this is our rehearsal of uh, town meeting. Um, it won't be exactly verbatim, word for word, the items uh, or the discussion comments. but. We will go through the motions, and uh, we certainly will entertain and welcome any discussion um, that comes from the audience. So without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, Ms. Boyardi. Of course, I have to go first. Um, this article, I am moving that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $7,317.42. Transfer the sum of $2,419.11 from Sewer Enterprise Reserves and transfer the sum of $4,383.12 from the Water Enterprise Reserve for the total sum of $14,119.65 for unpaid bills as written in the warrant. These bills are, I don't know if you want me to mention each bill. So what we would do, uh, Typically, after you read that, the moderator would uh, repeat, perhaps synopsize if he chooses, um, and then he would ask for discussion. So you may please okay. start your discussion comments. Um, these are semi-annual articles to fund a bill that incurred the previous fiscal year. The bills for this town meeting, as I mentioned, are $14,119.65 and will be funded from free cash, sewer, water, and water enter, uh, enterprise reserves. These pills, bills are the animal control uh, for W.B. Mason, $599.94, the department DPW, J.C. Madigan, for $146.22. You, um, you don't have to go through them All right. line by line unless Just somebody wants to. All right. So the total from the general fund for unpaid bills is $7,317.42. The total uh, sewer enterprise unpaid bill is $2,419.11. And the total water enterprise unpaid bills are $4,383.12 making the total the 14,119.65. Again, these are unpaid bills that are from the previous year that come on to this year, so it's just an approval to be able to pay for the bills that we incurred previously. I would just be sure to mention that um, it's not due to a budget shortfall or anything like that, um, not necessarily, ha it's not having bills beyond the, the approved budget from FY22, it's actually for bills that were received after the closeout of fiscal year 22, which happens on the 30th of June. Um, so this is how we take care of and make sure we settle our, our responsibilities. Okay, any questions? 
Okay, and if you would just state how the Finance Committee The Finance uh, voted. Committee recommends approval of this article. Was it unanimous or? Yes, it was. Okay, all right, any questions? Okay, Article 2. Article 2 will authorize the transfer of funds in the amount of $204,285.42 from the marijuana impact fees, which are included in the fiscal year 23 certified free cash. This will pay for the wages and expenses that were planned uh, to be supported by these funds when we approve the budget. Uh, but because free cash isn't certified until the fall of each year, we can't authorize the transfer of the funds to support those budgets until we have the free cash certified, uh, and then we can allocate those funds at fall town <coughs> meeting. So the Finance Committee voted unanimously to recommend approval of this article. Okay, any uh, further discussion, questions, comments? Okay, uh, Jody, Article 3. So Article 3 will approve uh, changes to the personnel plan for the town of Millis, which was last updated in 2015. Mm -hmm. There are updates uh, to such areas as longevity pay, adding a holiday, uh, that's Juneteenth, Juneteenth, as I remember, uh, changing vacation schedules, and other changes to bereavement leave, parental leave, and sick leave. Uh, we did provide a link to the plan um, in the Finance Committee packet. Uh, there's a number of minor changes, um, so we haven't really enumerated those there. Um, but it doesn't really have a financial impact in terms of needing to transfer any funds. It's just approving the plan as revised. And uh, the Finance Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. Okay. Questions or comments? Okay, Article 4 is the capital items. Uh, the capital items uh, will be moved to uh, recommend uh, free cash in the sum of nine, $92,226.75, uh, transfer from water reserves, water enter, uh, enterprise reserves, the sum of $22,226.75, and the transfer from sewer enterprises, excuse me, $22,226.75 and the same amount from stormwater for a total of $158,907 for the following capital items. Uh, a new chiller for $45,000 for this building. Uh, also $25,000 for a keyless entry system for this building. $26,967 for an air compressor for a DPW. Um, and finally $61,940 for a for the DPW for a Chevy Silverado with plow for some total of one hundred and fifty eight thousand nine hundred and seven dollars. Um, <clears throat> essentially, these uh, are, these are the projects that were requested by town departments that were uh, vetted, prioritized through the capital planning committee, um, which prioritized them as uh, uh, is a certain level of need, high need. Um, in this case, and the, the Capital Planning Committee submitted those recommendations to the Select Board for consideration as well as for this board, and we voted to recommend approval. I believe it was eight to one, but it may have been nine to zero. Dieter, do you have that handy? That's okay. Um, nonetheless, we voted to recommend approval. Um, in terms of uh, the splits between the free cash and reserves, any of those items that are for DPW, if they get used for roads, for sewer, for water, for storm sewer, uh, for storm water system, that uh, cost gets split. And you can see that those are the air compressor and the uh, Chevy Silverado. So any questions or comments on the capital items? Mr. Chair. Mr. Underhill. Um, my notes have Article 4 passed unanimously. Okay, thank you very much. And that's what's published. Okay, thank you. Um, Article 5. Article 5 is the Senior Center. Um, there likely will be some discussion on this. Um, Sidewalks. Uh, Sidewalks. Okay, <laughs> pardon me. Article 5. Sidewalks. Patrick, thank you for keeping me straight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yep. art Article 5 is to transfer available funds for in the amount of 500000 for road, sidewalk, construction, design, repair, and maintenance, or any other actions related thereto. 
uh, priority, priorities will be decided in consultation between the DPW and the select board who are best positioned to um, accomplish that. And it was unanimous, unanimously passed by the Finance Committee. Okay. Questions or comments? Ms. Harden. Lisa Harden, 56 Walnut. Uh, you read the, the article which says to transfer from available funds. What funds? It's from free, free cash. cash. Free cash. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. None heard. Uh, Article 6, Mr. Gatto. Yes, please. Article 6 is to move to see if we would transfer from uh, free cash $45,000 for repairs to Majors Fields and Softwell Fields 1 and 2, or any other actions related there too. This was a result from uh, the drought uh, this past summer, uh, sort of unprecedented sod failure on the fields. Um, so it's just a one-time fix to make sure the kids are all set to go when uh, April games roll around. And it was passed unanimously by the Finance Committee. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, done heard. Um, Article 7 is for the feasibility study for the middle high school. It will be moved that the um, town vote to approve um, the appropriation of $1,300,000 for the purpose of paying costs of conducting a feasibility study of the renovation, addition, or replacement of the middle high school. Um, this, uh, this project is essentially step one in the process to um, seek approval for um, the, the work as it, it, feasibility study is step one for having the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority to essentially um, participate, for us to participate, for the town to participate in the improvements to the school that are needed. There's a variety of work that's been identified that must get done, including electrical upgrades, uh, HVAC upgrades, roof upgrades, and some other um, upgrades as well. And so this study, which has been uh, analyzed by the Capital Planning Committee, the school board, and presented to the select board, is before us. Um, in order for the town to qualify for that, um, lack of a better, pardon the, the term, but it's a sub, not necessarily a subsidy, but a uh, contribution from the state, from MSBA, the, ta the town has to complete this feasibility study, and it's prescribed in the MSBA's process. Um, this will, this project, this work, and the feasibility study will identify all of the needs that um, will bring the school up to state standards as well as correct the deficiencies previously mentioned. Um, once that were, to, if that were to happen, there would be, if the study is completed, um, then the town essentially would uh, have an estimate of what those costs would be, those construction costs, renovation, addition, et cetera. Um, the town would vote on that uh, likely in the spring or sometime next year, and that would likely entail after that, uh, I would predict, uh, a, uh, a override um, for the, the lending that would be required to make the construction a sizable investment in the school. Um, so that, any override uh, would require not only a vote at town meeting, but then a vote on the ballot. Um, and the, the vote for um, the, the initial lending um, is the same as the, uh, I believe it's two-thirds vote on the, on the town meeting, and then at the ballot it would be majority vote. Um, and that's essentially the process in a nutshell. Um, are there any questions or comments? on the school feasibility study. Ma'am, if you would just come to a mic and please identify yourself um, and your address. Is she did have address? Uh -huh. I believe she did. My name is Mary Dennison, uh, 92 uh, Glen Ellen Boulevard, Millis. 
Um, I was just wondering uh, about the cost of the feasibility study. You had to use somebody particular to receive this, or how do you know that it's going to be $1.3 million for this study? Uh, I will, I'll attempt to answer that, and then, if, and then I'll ask that the uh, school committee come forward who's here. Um, this was a topic of discussion extensively at the Capital Planning Committee, and essentially the school committee, as well as MSBA, went through um, what they recommended for a cost based on like projects that have been completed in the past. Um, Millis does have some experience with this process, uh, recent experience, um, as uh, School committee, everybody participated in the same process for uh, the Clyde Brown, which was completed maybe three, about three years ago, I think. If anything, uh, invite the school committee to amplify that or correct me if I'm wrong. Denise Gibbons, school committee. Uh, the only thing, other thing that I would add is that we also um, referred with, discussed with an outside consultant that we're familiar with, that that is their uh, role. Um, and their business is project management on these school building projects. So in addition to looking at like projects in like districts over the course of the last two years and examples from the MSBA, as you mentioned, um, we also conferred with independent outside third party to just vet the number to make sure that it was accurate. Um, and they did confirm that that was the case. Okay. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. If there's any more or any follow-ups? Okay. None seen. And if anybody sees anybody waving on the TV, if you could get my attention. Sure. Okay. Um, Article eight is the new senior community center. Um, the committee um, recommended uh, does not recommend the project for approval. Um, and voted that way in a vote of six to three last week. So the committee uh, vote, the vote that was taken from the finance committee last week was to not recommend approval of that project. Um, since then, there has been uh, a number of correspondence uh, received by the committee, by myself, by the committee chair, um, as well as a letter and some correspondence from the Council on Aging. Um, the first um, letter or, or document that was received came from the Permanent Building Committee and answered a number of our questions and concerns or responded to those questions and concerns that we had last week. Um, and the second item that we received was a letter from the Council on Aging um, or through town, I can't remember exactly who it was addressed to, uh, but it, it came to the committee officially. It's posted on our meeting materials. It's on the town website. And essentially, the Council on Aging has um, taken a vote and an action to uh, request that the proposal for the senior center be deferred until a later date and reconsidered. Um, we, in our discussion at the F FinCom meeting two weeks ago, um, we chose our words um, I believe we chose our words carefully. We're not recommending dismissal of the proposal in the, in the warrant. Rather, we recommended um, that it, we did not recommend the article for approval by the town vote. And, and we also verbalized that we would take the article up for reconsideration if there were substantive changes to the proposal. And I'm not going to stand in the way of that as the chair. I don't know how I would vote um, if that were to happen, um, because I'd like to see what the proposal is. But there is no changes to the proposal brought before us at this point, at this time. Um, neither the correspondence from the direct, the excuse me, the chair of the permanent building committee who's here tonight, uh, nor the council on aging. There hasn't been substantive changes to the the warrant article. We, um, so we're not in a position necessarily to change our, um, our vote. I would advocate based on the letter that was received from the Council on Aging requesting that it be 
you know, there's different parliamentary terms. It, they haven't requested that it be tabled. Um, but I would recommend that we go for reconsideration um, so that we can change the language of our recommendation. So that we wouldn't necessarily recommend, um, we would not, rec we would not not recommend it for approval, approval, rather we would refer it back to the select board and the Council on Aging and the Permanent Building Committee for them to uh, essentially amend the proposal for consideration at a later date. Um, so if uh, I would love, I would like to hear discussion along those lines, I would welcome either the uh, Permanent Building Committee Chair or Council on Aging, if you have anything that you want to add to the documents that we've already received, I believe we've, I don't know if you've all read them, hopefully you've had an opportunity to do so. Um, you know, if there's, if I've mischaracterized or missed some of the salient points of the correspondence, I would invite you to come up and, um, you, you know, make those points. Um, otherwise, I would like to hear a motion along the lines of uh, for reconsideration so that we can take the next step to uh, my recommendation is that we would refer the article uh, in our motion it would be to, to refer back to the Permanent Building Committee, the Select Board, and the Council on Aging for a new proposal to be heard at a later date. Uh, Mr. Chair. Ms. Garzon. I have concerns with amending our vote at this point because what's printed in the Finance Committee report is that we, are, we do not recommend approval of the article, which would still stand because the article as written is, is in the warrant. So we have a responsibility to vote one way or the other on the articles that are in the warrant. I, I can foresee um, a possible way to limit confusion would be to leave our vote as it was voted at town meeting and then it's opened up for discussion and then the motion could be, the warrant could be deferred or the article be, could be deferred. I am not a parliamentarian though. Yeah. I mean, uh, Ms. Underhill tends to know more about town meeting time than I think uh, m most general people. Uh, what What is your thoughts on that? Ms. Underhill. <laughs> Thanks, I actually agree with the refer, with the motion to refer. For? To refer back to the boards, the specified boards to uh, frame a new plan or a new article for a later date. S for our, us to change our motion? I think, I mean, you still, I think you still can. I understand what you're saying about how it's already printed. Um, the, but the, it doesn't the mean motions you can't make the are, motion. The, the motions change all the time right. up until town meeting. Yep. The warrant article would, would not change. Correct. So it's just the motion on the article would change. And the only thing I, I'd add, which I didn't state earlier, is that um, I've been in consultation with um, town attorney regarding how we would go about this. Um, he was, again, he's not here, and I'm, I hate to put words in anybody's sure. mouth, less, uh, even less uh, an attorney. Um, he was less concerned about the parliamentary aspects of this discussion than he was with what what he recommended to for the motion at town uh, meeting. So I think he he did not express any concerns with us taking the item for reconsideration and then crafting a new motion. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> She's my expert on town meeting time. Um, <laughs> Mr. Gazinski. Mike Kaczynski, Town Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just for further clarification for those that may be um, watching that may be a little confused as to what this would be. Um, and again, I've discussed this with Town Council at length as well. Um, this, if the, if the Finance Committee were to approve this change of motion, the legal bottom line at the town meeting would be unchanged in that 
there would be no funding approved at the town meeting for this project. It would simply be that the message to town meeting and to the community is that this is being voted down at this time for referral in order that it could be taken up at a later time once more information and more feedback is gathered and a possibly somewhat different proposal is put before the body. So from a legal perspective, the, the, the difference between a vote not to recommend and a vote to refer there's not a ton of legal difference there, but it, it does send a different message to the community. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Harden. Hi, Lisa Harden, uh, town clerk. In terms of the difference between the two, if you make a motion to dismiss, then the discussion will be around pro and con dismissal, which could go either way. If you make a motion to refer, then you're going to have a discussion around, well, should we refer it? And if, if you vote to dismiss, that doesn't mean it's gone for good, that, you know, the next day the select board and the council on aging can go back to the drawing board. There's nothing stopping that, whether you say refer or not. But it, if you put it in the motion, then you're going to open it up to having some kind of a vote on whether we should refer or not, which it's gonna happen. It's gonna be voted on either, either way <laughs> regardless. And I think that the, the, the motion to refer has specific language after the referral. It's refer back to the three bodies that I mentioned for future consideration. A motion to dismiss stops there. And, and I personally want it to be discussed. I want the town to know that this is not off the table that it is not dead. It is very much open for future consideration. I think we, I personally was clear about that uh, last two weeks ago when we discussed it, that uh, I'm not anti-senior center, I'm anti this proposal. No, I'm, um, so I'm not that's, saying you are. I'm, no, I know, but I'm just <laughs> being clear why right. I'm advocating to refer versus dismiss. Right, but then you open up the discussion to whether you should refer and you might get a vote not to refer. Discussion is so. going to happen either way and I'm not trying to <laughs> cut off discussion. Okay. So. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Take your time. Chairman, um, I have to say this is one of the more bizarre. Would moves. you please state your James name? James McCaffrey, and... 21 Jamison Drive. Thanks, sir. Uh, this is a little bit more complex m maneuver than I've, uh, we've seen before, but I understand the rationale. I would only raise the issue um, tonight uh, for you to consider is, with all due respect to the Council on Aging, the proposal is presented to you by the Select Board. So I think in my view, it is up to the select board to come to the finance committee and say, we would like you to do whatever it is we'd like you to do. And I don't think they've taken a vote on this up until this time. Thank you. Mr. Gazinski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to confirm, yes, the select board has not, uh, this is the first time the select board has met since the, um, the letter was received, so they have not acted on it as of uh, tonight, uh, they do have a meeting on Monday as well where they're going to be reviewing all the articles and making their recommendations. Um, I know that doesn't help you this evening, <laughs> but um, just to make you aware of that, they do have that on their agenda for next Monday. Okay. The, I'm, all that said, with all due respect, I am comfortable moving, I would, I would seek a motion to do as I proposed that we would vote to reconsider and then follow that with a motion to refer, which I'm happy to make. Um, I'm happy to do that now. I am also, um, we do have the opportunity to wait to do that until uh, the afternoon or evening of the 10th of November prior to town meeting um, so that the select board has an opportunity to discuss it. Um, you know, we voted 
not to recommend without knowing what the select board's position is. It wouldn't, we have the, we have the article in front of us. We know what it says. Um, we've read the materials from the permanent building committee. Others have discussed it at length in, in our proceedings and in, in others, capital plan committee and, you know, other venues. So I'm comfortable moving forward. If the committee is not, I'm happy, you know, we can, we can wait and I'll push a little harder for it then. So, uh, Ms. Boyardi. Um, I move that we wait until the day of so that the select board can get a chance to decide what they'd like to recommend and then we make our decision. That's my recommendation. Give them the opportunity. Okay. Put it back to them. Mr. Clocko. Uh, good evening, Wayne Clocko, 85 Walnut Street, chairman of the uh, Permanent Building Committee. Uh, since I last uh, appeared before you, I said to pieces of communication to the committee. Um, I would hope that they, those were circulated to the entire uh, committee for consideration. Uh, I hope they answered the questions that you raised. Um, I would uh, uh, say to you that um, through the long, arduous process that has been uh, undertaken to get the word out to the community, uh, this has always been a question um, uh, that was to be put to the voters. And we understood that um, if there was any chance for the uh, uh, voters of the town to consider this uh, issue on the merits, that it would require a complete endorsement of both uh, the select board and the finance committee. Um, uh, unfortunately, I think at the time that you took your vote, um, you did not have complete information. You did not necessarily um, give us the opportunity to respond. I know that questions raised about a Google search and how other communities uh, funded their projects uh, was considered without our opportunity to, uh, to respond. Uh, I am not a parliamentarian either, but I am not asking you to uh, amend the warrant article. I'm asking you to reconsider your vote based on the information. And frankly, whether or not the, the uh, Council on Aging decides to ask the select board to withdraw the article or not, I think the process is flawed. And correspondingly, I think the well has been poisoned for uh, the uh, uh, townspeople to understand that the Finance Committee um, does not agree with this project. And so for that reason, um, I ask you to reconsider your vote. And from the reasons that this committee gave as to why they did not um, agree with this project, I believe at least some of them exceed the responsibility and the authority of the Finance Committee. You, this proposal was simply asking whether or not the, the committees that were tasked with developing this plan had done so in a uh, prudent manner, whether or not it was financially responsible. And that's all, we, that's all we asked that you consider. Not whether or not there was a higher purpose for the Cassidy Farm, not whether or not there was a sewer connection that was contingent upon it, or whether or not these costs were an outlier. And so you made decisions on your own that I think went beyond the question that was before you. And so for that reason, I ask that you reconsider. Because when we do come up next time, and I understand that you may have reservations about uh, this particular project, there has to be confidence um, by the voters that whatever is put forward can in fact be built and that it, it is a viable project. But you've, you've tainted uh, that process. In all due respect, I think a lot of people know that I am very much in favor of having a senior center. However, it's m to present, I think our chair had validity to, to search out and see what other communities, what the costs were. 
and there was a huge discrepancy. And when asked what the difference, the $5 million difference was, nobody could give us an answer. So I did vote for the senior center. I was one of the three that did. Um, from what I've seen since then, the papers that have been received, there's a lot of people, I mean, there's a, this town is really split and there are a lot of people who are seniors who are voting no. It's not the younger generation, uh, of course it is, but the majority seems to be the older population that is being, that is saying, this is way too, $16 million is way too much. Then to come in and say, well, it might be 11 million, but we've already heard that there may be added costs. I just think that the fact that you guys are willing to wait until spring and redesign and give us a better, better dollar amount, I think then in turn, the committee would be more receptive to the proposal. But there's just been too much, well, it could be this and it could be that and it could be this and it could be that. And with the town being so separated, I just, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have agreed that maybe it is best to wait till spring. Not that we don't support it, but that if the numbers could be more accurate, then I think you'd have a much better support. Ms. Mr. Clarko? Yes, may I respond? You certainly may. Um, the number is not $11 million. The, the number is $16 million. And it's always been $16 million. I've, I've provided a document to you that shows that the actual construction cost, the actual cost of labor and materials, the brick and mortar cost is $11.7 million. And to that, you have to add architectural fees and uh, project manager fees. Uh, and there is a contingency in there. And that grosses up that cost to $16 million. Now, I've explained in the, in the information that I provided to you that we conservatively estimated that on the high side so that we would have enough money to enter into multiple contracts with architects and project managers, general contractors, subcontractors, all of which would have to come in under that amount to build that project. That is the only that is the only issue that is before you. There is no agreement to re -go, go back and redesign. There is no funding. There is no funding to re go back and redesign. There's, you don't have a Warren article asking for additional fees to do that. And so we asked, through all of the uh, focus groups that we uh, conducted, to let the voters decide, but frankly, the the decision by the Finance Committee has forced the Council on Aging to withdraw because, in, as I would say, the well has been poisoned. Okay. Mr. Clarko, um, I've heard I've got to take issue with one item, and that is that this committee, in my opinion, has not overstepped its bounds and has not tainted any process. Um, we've fulfilled our charter to make recommendations on the warrant articles that were presented to us. And regardless of what we say, or what we recommend, this article will go to a vote before the town. Nobody can stop that. It's on the warrant. Our job is not to stamp every recommendation or every article that comes before us. So regardless of, we, we've never personally during uh, my chairmanship or tenure as the chair here, I've never tried to cajole votes, uh, reach cons you know, absolute consensus and, and uh, unanimous votes so that we can signal to the town that we are all in favor. If, if a vote is eight to one, seven to two, six to three, that's how it goes. We, we have never tried to do that and I think that the, the votes of this committee in the past several years before myself and, and others that have chaired this committee, Craig Schultz and Jody um, and Mr. Germain, that the votes of this committee have represented pretty closely how the town feels. Um, we vote on the issues and the select board has a different perspective. The select board at times in my experience has voted 
in order to signal that let the townspeople vote. They don't want to signal one way or the other. Our job is to signal exactly how we feel um, the proposal uh, or how the warrant article, what we recommend the townspeople do. Um, I don't think that we've overstepped our bounds asking about, uh, we, we've generally allowed a wide purview of issues, um, ancillary issues or peripheral issues to be considered and discussed. If they're way off topic and absolutely irrelevant, then I tend to rein them in. Um, so if it's alternate uses of property, that, that deals, uh, that, that lends itself to town finances. If it's uh, pump stations um, that potentially are a, uh, an unaccounted for secondary cost that comes up to residents or sewer enterprise customers, uh, I feel like we should talk about that. Now, whether that compels somebody to vote one way or another, that's up to them. But um, you made some comments in your uh, letter about um, the debt schedule, I would, I would venture to guess that that's probably out of the purview of the PBC. I, I don't care either way. I think it's all good discussion to have. But to say that we've tainted the process, um, I definitely take exception with that. So, Mr. Stedman. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, it was recommended by the committee that looked at the, I, I, I think it was the charter, that this committee be renamed the Warrant Committee, uh, as many towns have done, because our job is to review and uh, opine on the warrant articles. And to me, that says it's a broad scope. We ended up keeping the name Finance Committee, but we, uh, we don't control the finances. We just make recommendations, and we make recommendations on the warrant, and that is our charter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. I will. Let any, anybody that wants to speak may speak. So just please just stand up, raise your hand. Uh, one second, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Duffy. Uh, Jim Duffy, Upper Exchange Street, Millis. Um, and despite walking in late, I was tuned in. Um, I'll give a few comments from somebody who didn't understand that this process started two plus three years ago. I do question how and where, and this is somewhat to the select board, but where's the plan for what we do and when? In other words, two years ago, three years ago, I think we all knew a high school was gonna be looming, but a senior center got kicked off. And just from a today's perspective, I think we knew that back then. So I, I question sort of where's the master plan that we had at one point in time, right? What's next in the plan, right? So that's just some constructive feedback of what we do and when. <clears throat> I don't think there's any question this project can be built. That's not the question. We've proven time and time again we can build whatever we want to build. I think the scope got bigger, and there's no oversight committee that said, hold on, rein in the expenses here. Right? We asked the COA, the very passionate people, what's the best thing we can do for our senior citizens? <coughs> And they came up with a grand plan. And we went and created a construction project to suit that plan. Only at the end, when the number came up, did someone step back and say, whoa, wait a minute. So going forward on projects, I'd advocate, and I don't have the answer, but there needs to be some review of where are we with who wants to pay for what, what's the town willing to afford, so you're going to have to ask people. Many, I never received as a senior citizen any sort of survey that said, we're talking about a senior center. What would you like to, to see? What, do you participate? Why not? Why or why not? As a for instance, right? So the problem is we've spent 70 plus million dollars building things, and here's another 16 million when people know we've got a high school that's going to need some work. There's probably another $6 million in a water treatment plant that's going to need some work. I said this before the last meeting. We don't present the big picture to the town on where we are with our expenses, where's the debt rolling off, and therefore what should come on to the debt schedule so that we don't just keep doing that. Thank you. 
Ms. Underhill? I'll answer that question. Mr. Schultz. Thanks. Um, I just have a couple questions. And, uh, the first, the design for the building was built to fit the program that was described as, as the introductory site. Um, whether that's the right size program or not, that's the design that was arrived at. And the price is based on that design that fits the program. So the price at $16 million may be an unpalatable price, but it is the price that gets you what we're looking at. So we are out of money for design and pricing and study. The Permanent Building Committee spent everything else, everything it had, the $35,000 grant on this project. Where are we gonna get the money to do a new price estimate, a new design and a new design to fit a program? Uh, that's my only concern mechanically. Does this have to go in and appropriate more money, which can't happen this year, at this meeting for further design and cost study if we're gonna change the entire program? Or are we just gonna to try to skinny down the existing building to fit the program? Uh, and, and maintain the program that we have by cutting something on the building, which I don't know what it would be. So that's my question, I guess, to Mr. Clocko, is that, and, and everybody, are there funds to do any further pricing or studies? And one other point on Mr. Duffy's comment, um, we have talked about the high school since we voted the Clyde Brown. We said it would be seven to 10 years out. The senior center may or may not have been mentioned then, I don't recall. But um, the reason that everything piled up is unfortunately COVID hit. So the senior center was delayed by two years and the high school, um, we honestly, I don't think anybody expected to be selected on this soon in the application process. We thought we had another three or four years on on that before you're invited to apply. But once you're invited to apply, you have to apply. So anyway, my question about this article more importantly is where are the funds coming from to do this new design and get a new price? And how will we know there's any validity in that if it's not been run through cost estimators that the town hires to use? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. McCaffrey. I'm not a Phillies fan, but I am. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So the Red Sox are not playing them. We'll go with the Phillies. Um, just to have a partial response to Mr. Duffy, um, we do have a 10-year projection of projects that will have to be done. Um, it's contained here in the uh, in the town um, the finance committee report. It's actually published semi-annually. It is updated on a regular basis. It certainly needs and continue to need improvement. Um, but just is as a capital, plan, is that the capital spending plan, Jim? Correct. Okay. Which, um, not wanting to go directly to the number, but I mean, it, it identifies about $90 million of capital projects that we'll have to probably incur the cost of one way or the other uh, over the next 10 years. Um, now, this is intended to try and make sure that whenever you're making a decision like this one, you're making it in the con I'm talking about the voter now, you're making it in the context of what else is out there, which is certainly was the observation from folks five or six years ago that we never knew was coming up. Um, so I would say that uh, hopefully people would get a chance to take a look at this, um, make, rec make suggestions as to how we can improve it. Uh, Capital Planning Committee is always trying to make this uh, as comprehensive as we can. And I, uh, so I was speaking, the initial part of my comment is as a member of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, I would also like to now speak as an individual about um, tabling this particular proposal and coming back with the answer uh, in the spring. Um, the answer is gonna be as hard in the spring as it is today. Um, you know, my personal view is, having served on a couple of committees, is this facility as it is outlined and designed to help us support and deliver services to our seniors is the right project. If it's gonna be less money, it's gonna be a smaller building because I do not believe that this is that far off in terms of the benchmarks as to what you can, what you can spend on this kind of building. It'll have to be a smaller building, it would cost less money, that we would know. Uh, so that's the case. Or it'd have to be built with less quality. And certainly there's a range of things you could do 
in terms of scaling back the quality of construction. And uh, my only observation there is, and I think there's one member of the Finance Committee who also will share this experience, I've had the great pleasure of building the Clyde Brown School twice. And that's because the first building, which was ready to be torn down within 20 years of its remodeling, was not really built for the long haul. I don't think we should compromise with the quality of the building. I think we should build a building for the long haul, not the short haul. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say a few things, and I hope that you'll bear with me and humor me, because I'm going to go back into some things that I said a couple weeks ago, and um, I think they're better said now than in any, you know, certainly in the future. Um, I'm not suggesting a redesign of the senior center. As I said a couple weeks ago, I'm more concerned with the numerator than I am the denominator. I'm more concerned with the cost than the square footage. That's not to say that I 100% agree that it's the right square footage. But I believe the process was followed in terms of feasibility study. We did with every, what every other town, whether it be Mansfield, Pembroke, um, Sturbridge, uh, Wilmington, North Andover, they've all done the same thing, feasibility study, and they've gone through the program, and we've done the same thing, and we've come up with, you know, essentially what our senior population is now, what the growth would be, and what the square footage should be, including adequate space for privacy, for activities, for meals. I don't, I don't have a problem with the square footage that is, uh, that is presented. However, to say that we need to go back to the drawing board and start over with another $35,000 feasibility study, that's not what I'm suggesting. That feasibility study uh, produced a, con a conceptual plan. The conceptual plan does not need to be redone to have another pretty drawing put on the front of a feasibility page. Um, costs can be uh, reduced, and they should be. And I think it's absolutely relevant to look at these other projects. It's been suggested that it's not relevant. It is relevant. And I'm not going to come off of that. So I did some more research. Um, and I found that actually the outlier is not in the construction costs. It's in the, it's in the, the soft costs. And I'll give you some data to back that up. Um, again, our total cost, total cost per square foot is uh, $16 million divided by 15,000 square feet is $1,066 per square foot. Sturbridge, which has been argued, although somebody has suggested that it's irrelevant to compare square footages, has said, look at Sturbridge. They're right in line with ours. Well, you can't have it both ways. You're either going to say that the square footage is irrelevant, all of them, or they're not. But you can't pick and choose the one that uh, agrees with where our figure is. Sturbridge. $964 a square foot, and I'll come back to that. Pembroke, Pembroke's is particularly relevant because it's, in, it's being done right now. Now it is, portions of it are, are, none of these, as I said two weeks ago, are apples to apples comparisons. They're unique projects. None of them are twins to our project. $553 per square foot includes a gym, includes a, a two-store, a two-court gym, a two-story gym with an elevated track. This is not just an open barn. Um, there are other design issues that raise the cost of that square footage that you can't just subtract it out and say, oh, their square footage is skewed because they have low cost square footage of a gym. It's not that simple. So going into some of the fees that I think actually need a hard look at, design costs. Our design cost is estimated at 15%. Um, that is just a number that's added on to the hard, the, the, uh, the hard costs, the construction costs, 15%. Sturbridge, 10%. Pembroke, 7%. That's, that's half of what we're estimating. Project management, 10% um, is what our study includes and what our cost estimate includes. Sturbridge, which has been argued to be one that supports that our cost is in line. Their project management fee is not 10%, it's 4%. Pembroke's uh, owner's project management, 2%. Contingency dollars. Our contingency dollars are roughly 11.4%. Uh, 
uh, 100, excuse me, $1.83 million for contingency. Sturbridge estimated 5%, only $478,000 for very similar construction. Uh, Pembroke, 4% only $816,000 for a 41,000 square foot building that has gym, has a gym and some other facets. Our construction is pretty similar. It's, uh, excuse me, pretty simple. It's construction that's going on former fa farmland that um, it's one story construction. There's no elevator. There's no exotic mechanical systems. Um, I'm sure there'll be some site work required, but there's no retaining walls like there is at uh, Sturbridge. Um, those, the Pembroke facility includes an elevator, drives up the cost. So we've, we've basically doubled the soft cost add-ons for simple construction, and we've driven up the cost. Our cost difference for just those factors, just the design cost, the project management, and contingency dollars, were $3 million over Sturbridge's budget. Pembroke, their figure, their construction cost, their total construction cost is $23 million. Our contingency design and project management is $2 million more than theirs for a facility that's half the size and a simple one-story facility. I don't think we need to redesign our project. I think somebody needs to look at these figures and get the costs in line. Our, in my study, Google it you know, as simple as it was, four studies was found that our costs are an outlier. We're $1,066 per square foot. Some of these other facilities are half that. You can argue and say that it's irrelevant and I shouldn't have looked. I did and I'm going to continue to, to bring it to voters' attention because I think it's wrong. I think our costs are high. Mr. Chair? Mr. Andre. Um, I'm going to agree with your earlier statement that we do not need to wait on the select board to vote. This committee was comfortable voting on this article without a select board vote previously. So I move that we reconsider our vote on Article 8. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee vote to reconsider uh, our vote from last week on Article 8 discussion. None heard. All those in favor of reconsideration, reconsideration say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Two opposed. Three, Three opposed, excuse me. Um, dear to the vote, the motion passes six to three. Okay. Um, I would like to hear a motion to refer the article to the select board to the Council on Aging and to the Permanent Building Committee for further um, analysis and development of a proposal at a future town meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, I may. You may. Um, I, I kind of grew up with Mr. McCaffrey on the select board and was always taught that it's the select board that prepares the warrant. And so um, we always, select board always voted before it would go to the finance committee and why they haven't, I don't know. But um, I'm opposed to reconsideration because this is what's before us, the uh, warrant article that the select board presented and uh, that's what we voted on. And I don't think it's appropriate for uh, the Finance Committee to uh, recommend things go back to the drawing board and vote up or down on what this one is, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. McCaffrey. This may be a technical point, but I don't think that we can vote in a town meeting to commit somebody to do something later. We have to vote what they're supposed to do with what we have. Mm -hmm. So I think we really need to check with town council on this to make sure that it achieves what you're trying to achieve. We have, sir. Oh, and he said you could do this. He recommended that we make a motion to refer. And if okay. Mr. Gazinski, please uh, clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I wish he'd prepare a document, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, um, like this. you're both right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in good company. I got that straight from council. Um, you can make that motion. It is non-binding. So the town meeting can make that motion, which essentially you move on to the, the next article. Um, the article ends up not being a proof of funding. It's referred, and so you basically, the town meeting would send a message to those bodies that it would like them to uh, review the matter again for further study and come back, but again, it's non-binding. So if it is, Mr. McCaffrey's correct, then you cannot force them to do that. It's so basically a uh, recommendation and gives the feeling of town meeting in, in the position of town meeting, but it is non-binding. Okay. Ms. Underhill. Hi, Erin Underhill, Chair of the Select Board. Um, we did, I think it was mentioned earlier that at our meeting coming up on Monday, we'll be talking about all the articles and any recommendations that we want to make. However, we could probably take a vote right now if it would be helpful to refer. I won't stand in your way. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll make the motion then um, that the select board also um, recommend referral of this article to go back to the select board, the Council on Aging, and the Permanent Building Committee um, to further review. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer Article 8. Um, any discussion? Yes, Madam Chairman. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not super comfortable with the referral on it. It's the safe option. I believe this thing has no momentum to pass. Um, but I also believe there's been a lot of work in it. I think an up or down vote on the article as written is what's called for. Um, but I, and I, and I'm honestly looking at and seeing, and after the COA pulls its support, I don't think it's going to pass, but that was always a risk. I've never seen an article pulled for fear of it's going to fail. I've seen articles fail. I saw the library fail. I saw them go back, redesign it and come back with a library that was several million dollars less expensive and, um, significantly smaller and one story and cost less to operate. Um, then it passed. I, I don't think, again, I'm not saying that this is likely to pass, but I think it deserves an up or down vote. So I, I do not endorse the idea of uh, referring it back to further study because secondly, there's no money for a further study. And I know we don't have to spend 35,000 for a whole new design, but I have read the article, I've read the documents that Wayne put out. And yeah, there's a million bucks we could probably trim off of this project on uh, project management and design contingent or design costs. That drops it to 15 million. Is 15 or $16 million a difference? I don't think so. I think when you start getting the other ones, the inflation adjustment, we have the contingency as an seven or 8%, 7.4% uh, markup for uh, construction uh, costs going up between when we finish the design and we open the building. The other ones were in today's dollars. You know, it's a, it's a, it's not an apples to apples comparison. That's not a contingency. That's an escalator for costs that we know are going to go up because of inflation between today and two years from now, or a year from now when the ground breaks and two years from now when the project's finished. So that's my take on it. I, I would rather see an up or down vote on it personally. Okay. All right, well, we'll take a vote. All right, um, all those in favor, I'll roll call. Um, I'll say aye. Um, Ellen? I say aye. And Craig? No. Okay, so the motion passes two to one from the select board. Okay, first. thank you. Any further discussion from the Finance Committee? Um, I think I saw Ms. McCaffrey first, please. If you'd come to Mike. Christine McCaffrey, 21 Jamison Drive. Um, I've heard all about referring and that. My question is, and it's been said that we can bring it back up in the spring. Well, 
you're not going to vote funding to make adjustments to the um, design. Um, where will the money come from so that the Council on Aging and the Permanent Building Committee can come back to the town meeting in the spring with um, an adjusted plan? That's my question. My, my answer would be um, that is when it gets referred back to those bodies, those entities, that becomes their challenge to figure out how to do it. So. Ma'am. Susan Simpson, 52 Island Road. I would just like to say that this has been going on for a long time. I know that there's been a lot of work and hard work into it, but I agree with Craig, I agree with Kathy. I think at this point, there's been so much effort into going, what's going on and the warrants have been out there. People have been talking it up. People have an opinion about which way they want to vote, yes or no. And I don't think it should be deferred, but if it is, my question is, can we bring it up for a vote and, and as part, at town meeting? The citizens can, correct? Yes, this will be voted on. Our, we will make a motion to refer the article. It will go to a town vote. If it fails, if the motion to refer fails at town meeting, then likely there will have to be another motion to consider it because there still would not be an appropriation uh, voted on. So for this to go forward, an appropriation motion would have to be made. So if, again, there would be a, a... A citizen can do that. Someone at that town meeting can do that. A citizen could, but likely we would be prepared to do, to do such. Okay. A and, you know, at, at that point, it, it go, it's, the town is going to vote on this. This motion to refer, I don't want to say it's semantics because I think that this, the words matter. We're signaling that it is, we're not voting for this proposal that we are open to consideration for another proposal, but that's not going to happen at this, apparently not at this town meeting. And I didn't expect, unfortunately, that it was gonna be able to happen in the two weeks since this committee voted okay. to not recommend it. Um, we would like to give you time. We cannot give you money um, to, to do that. So I personally think that a vote, a no vote on the article as written or a vote to dismiss it is worse than a vote to refer. You're getting a check mark against you and people are signaling potentially, they don't get much to say, they're not signaling that they, they're open to a senior center. They're signaling, no, go away. We're dismissing it and, and I don't think that's the right message. Now some people may. But, but, but if they say, if it, if, it, if it does get to a no vote, they, they can still come back in May or whenever they want with a new proposal that's correct. more accommodating correct. to what of people course. want financially. Of course, by either citizen's petition, which correct. we have citizen petition articles on this warrant, or a new warrant article that the select board opts to put on the warrant at any other time. Right, okay, thank you. Okay. All right, we're, we need to move. Um, so uh, any further discussion, last chance. Uh, so a motion has been made and seconded that this committee vote to refer Article 8 back to the select board, the permanent building committee, and the Council on Aging for further consideration. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those against, please say nay. Nay. Okay, motion passes 8 to 1. Okay? All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Okay, Article 9. That is mine. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Underhill. Um, Article 9 um, will adopt Clause 22H. Um, what Clause 22H will cover is the parents or guardians who have lost a son or daughter who died serving their country, um, known as the parents of Gold Star veterans. Clause 22D already covers the spouses of Gold Star veterans. This will cover the parents or guardians. As of now, there are no Millis residents. Please um, hold, pause for one second. Quiet, please. Take it either, Outside. please take it to the hallway or take it down to a whisper. Thank you. 
as of now, there are no Millis residents that this would apply to. If this article is approved and a parent or guardian of a Gold Star veteran moves to Millis, the state will reimburse Millis the full cost of the exemption for the first five years and 50% of the exemption after that five-year period. Surrounding towns who have adopted this exemption are Norfolk, Medfield, Medway, and Holliston, along with 70% of towns in the state. The remaining 30% are up for a vote this year at town meetings and none have been rejected yet. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. Okay. Um, any questions, comments, discussion? Okay, next, Article 9. Um, that is mine as well, Mr. Chair. I actually have a question for Ms. Johnston. On uh, 10, 10. Article, article 10, 10 excuse me, um, okay. on this article about the reimbursement schedule. Is the reimbursement schedule for Article 10 the same as it would be for Article 9? The 50% after five years for the town? Um, no, it's based on what the state reimburses for those uh, veteran exemptions. They can change at any time. Uh, right now, there's one that reimburses. Uh, we, the town gives $400, and then we get reimbursed $275 for, for that exemption. Um, the 22E is a $1,000 exemption and we get reimbursed $825. And there are varied exemptions that would be covered, covered under Article 10, which we probably shouldn't need to get into at town meeting, but we do get right. reimbursed a certain amount from yes, the state Yes, we do get this. a, a, a that percentage be fair to of say? it back. Okay, mm -hmm. that'd be fair for me to say. Oh yes, okay. yes, Thank that you. would be fair. I appreciate that. Okay. So Article 9, uh, Article 10, just like Article 9, this, um, this exemption modification has been adopted by all towns who have held their town meetings so far that I have previously stated. 70% um, of towns in the state have approved. This reduction in the residency requirement will make one additional veteran eligible for property tax deduction at this time. Um, the Finance Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. Okay. Comments, questions? Article 11, Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, article 11 would vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $85,000 for an environmental impact settlement and a phase two report for the property located at 12 through 14 Exchange Street. Um, this is, uh, the settlement is, you know, has been negotiated and is sort of incumbent upon the town to uh, finalize that. And obviously the phase two environmental report is um, something that we should definitely do to mitigate any environmental impact and remediate it if there is any further existing. Okay, discussion, questions? Article 12, Sarah. This article would move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $25,000 from marijuana impact fees, free cash, to reimburse Advisa for its initial deposit related to its HCA agreement with the town. Um, the $25,000 reimbursement for marijuana impact fees um, we are reimbursing Advisa due to the termination of the host, the cannabis host community agreement by and between Advisa and the town of Millis, um, which has been terminated by Advisa for Advisa made the determination they were unable to proceed forward in the chosen location due to the current zoning state marijuana restrictions and therefore their application was withdrawn. So we have to um, get back their deposit. The Finance Committee uh, unanimously recommends approval of this article. Okay. No questions, comments heard. Uh, Mr. Lohr, 13. For Article 13 is to move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $128,721.70 to fully fund the fiscal year 2022 snow and ice deficit. This is an annual adjustment to the snow and ice budget because of the unpredictable weather for each winter season. The town had originally budgeted $218,727 for this, which has been consistent number over the years, funding the deficit of $128,721.70 will balance the snow and ice budget for fiscal year 2022. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. Okay. Um, Mr. Stedman, Article 14, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll read the, the full motion that the lawyers have uh, presented at the town meeting, but for this. If you must. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's but here, this is really a formality. In the spring meeting, we approved the money for this. What this article does, is the reason this is here is because if we finance this with debt that has to be approved in a town meeting, uh, then we get reimbursed uh, for the debt as this project is executed. Uh, it requires two-thirds of a vote. It uh, has a minimal impact on the, uh, the budget. The, the cost of doing this is about $4,000, $5,000. So uh, <clears throat> the Finance Committee unanimously recommended approval. My only uh, comment, and, and I'm sure you got it, is that uh, you are crystal clear on what that motion means because it's been confusing. We asked them to go back and right. you just make sure you have it. And and uh, yeah. who knows, the moderator would likely, questions that come up would likely refer to town administrator, town finance right. director, or town attorney. But um, I think we'll all be ready for that one. It is yeah. slightly confusing. It's confusing, but it's a technicality. Okay. Uh, Miss uh, John, uh, Article 15, Mr. Stedman. <clears throat> uh, the state of Massachusetts uh, is uh, working with the town on a revised water permit, which will have significant impacts on all of the, uh, the residents of the town that use, uh, that use water. It will restrict, uh, <clears throat> really clamp down on the number of days that we can water, uh, reducing them to two days a week uh, without a severe drought. Uh, it will reduce significantly the amount of water that we can pull uh, from the aquifer, and um, it, will, it will negate our current ability, even though it hasn't been exercised, uh, to sell water to the town of Franklin. Uh, what this $56,864 does is <clears throat> to allow the town to work with a consultant to construct a convincing argument to the state to uh, relax what they're proposing for the new water permit. Okay. Any questions? Okay, none heard. Ms. McGinnis. Article 16. Article 16. Uh, the Finance Committee unanimously voted that the town vote to transfer from Water Enterprise Reserves the sum of 165000 for the preliminary design of a PFAS treatment plant at well number three. Well three, located off Birch Street, is testing high in levels of PFAS which will need to be addressed. The Massachusetts Environmental Protection Agency and Department of Environmental Protection are implementing stricter guidelines in terms of PFAS chemicals in drinking water. Water Enterprise Reserves will fund this article in the amount of $165,000. Okay. Thank you. Article 17, Kathy. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chair, the Finance Committee unanimously voted that the town appropriate $250,000 to pay for costs associated with the Asset Management Program Phase 3, Purchase and Development of a Sewer and Stormwater Asset Management System. Um, this article would fund expansion to the Sewer and Stormwater Infrastructure Inventory, assess the overall infrastructure, and develop a five-year capital improvement plan the cost is $250,000, of which $150,000 will be a borrowing from the sewer enterprise reserves and $100,000 from the stormwater enterprise reserves. Funding of 60% of the initiative will be reimbursed through the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. Thank you. We're just having a bit of a sidebar on here, and I just wanted to be clear that the borrowing um, is coming from the enterprise or by the enterprise funds, not from general fund or or is there is that a affirmative, Ms. Johnson? Okay. Two thirds vote. Okay. Eighteen again, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, the finance committee unanimously mm -hmm. uh, voted that the town vote to transfer the remaining balances of closed projects from the following sewer capital articles. Is it necessary, Mr. Chair? Do you want me to give no. them? Okay. Um, this article in the amount of $130,000, $333.61, uh, 
will be funded through rescinded borrowing of completed sewer enterprise fund projects which require a town meeting vote. An II investigation is required by the DEP and the Charles River Pollution District Control to minimize the flow that is not necessarily sewage but stormwater. The town performs this investigation on a regular basis. It might be worthwhile to mention, and you forgive me, you, mm -hmm. you may have it in there, but just to make sure it's crystal clear that what sewer rescinded borrowing is in the sense that if projects were appropriated but didn't expend all their funds, the funds are there, and it's not, they aren't new, um, it's not new, it's, it's not new revenue, it's, it's uh, old expenses that didn't fully uh, manifest and the funds are still available for, for expenditure. Does that make sense, Kathy? Yes, it does. Okay. Everything you say, Mr. Chair, makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah, now you're, that, that, that doesn't. <laughs> okay. No, come on. Mr. Lohr. <laughs> Zing. Can I just make one point? Yeah. Please. So it's not, it, we're not rescinding the borrowing. The borrowing was already done for those initial projects. What we're doing is transferring the balance of the closed projects over to the new project. Thank you. You're welcome. It says rescinded on our spreadsheet, but we'll make sure we don't use that word. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. For Article 19 is to move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $25,000 to the unemployment account. This is a regular transfer based on availability of free cash. This amount varies each year based on these numbers. For this year, it's $25,000. Millis is self-insured and is required to pay all unemployment claims for both the town and school. The current balance of the unemployment account through August of 2022 is $90,933.60. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. That was fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> I'll go to the next. Um, article 20. Jo Joyce. Joyce Boyardi, 206 Orchard Street. This article is to make, um, to accept Pearl Street, Deborah Lane, and Teresa Drive as public ways according to the MGLC 82S83. These right now, um, they, this would allow the Hickory Hill subdivision located uh, off of Acorn Street um, to accept for the, the to accept the, the acceptance of this um, subdivision, making it town owned. Once a street is accepted by the town, the town is obligated to maintain it, including snow removal and road um, maintenance. Uh, the finance committee unanimously recommended the approval of this article, um, and, and everyone in the subdivision is also in favor of it. Is there an estimated O&M or budget cost for picking this up? That I would have to find out for you, sir. I would anticipate that question. Mr. Chair, I just want, once the uh, town meeting accepts a road, then um, the town administrator and DPW can apply for Chapter 90 funds to be included. So uh, the mileage would be added and uh, would be calculated in the reimbursement. So, Mr. Chair, you want me to find out from the DPW director what the cost would yeah, be? I think you ought to just, yep, yes. Estimate. So, you know, so snow removal could be, and there could be an MS4 cost for storm drain maintenance. There could be anything that we do to a utility and road systems now that the town officially owns those, if, if voted, I shouldn't say now, but if voted, if and when, <laughs> those would add to the budget. I'm sure it's nominal compared to all the other roads that the town has, but I would anticipate that question. Very good. In my conversation with him, it was not brought up. Other things were, but not that. Okay. So, thank you. I will find out. Article 21. That would be me again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is to transfer this article, which was unanimously um, recommended for approval by the, the um, Finance Committee, is to transfer from free cash $50,000 to the OPED trust fund, which is cons called, uh, the abbreviation is Other Post-Employment Benefits. Um, this article would add funds to the OPED and the amount of $50,000 from the free ca cash. Currently, the town is covering claims as needed from general operating budget, 
but should be um, setting aside additional funds for the future OPEB obligations. What else? Um, if you could, please, <laughs> since you asked, um, give a couple of examples of what those other post-employment benefits are. I don't think that's widely known as to what are we talking about. It's a, it's a great acronym. Um, that would be for the um, insurance. That would be for, perhaps Mike could tell me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, that is primarily for uh, retiree health insurance. I would say in excess of 95% of that is for that purpose. Thank you. Retiree health insurance. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Article 22, Sarah. Um, after I read this, I want to check something with Ms. Johnston, if that's okay, too. Certainly. Okay. If she's still here. She is. Oh, yeah, she's not. It's a heavy folder. She has to take yeah. time to get up. I mean, it's in like that. She probably snuck out. Mike has four pages. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a chair open. Um, this article would transfer the sum of $300,000 into the Chapter 41, Section 111F Injury Leave Indemnity Fund which was established after approval at the fall 2021 town meeting as a reserve fund for the purpose of paying police officers and firefighters who have sustained injuries in the performance of their duty. My question is, does this only cover the injured officers, the, re the remaining to get to the 100% salary, or does it also cover the ship coverage, or does the ship coverage come out of the budget? Um, the uh, injured uh, firefighter or police officer received their base pay they receive um, anything ba contractually uh, for them for their holiday pay or stipends <coughs> that they would get. So right. it would cover those things. There, there never is a shift um, differential for them. Oh, no, I mean the coverage that they then need to cover the person that is out. No, so you would, that so it would does not. That, right. This only okay. covers the actual payments to the uh, Thank injured you. police officer or firefighter. Okay, because I had that, so I will take that out. Thank you very much. Um, and then I had that the average annual amount for paid injury leave in Millis over the last few years has been $96,000 a year, and the current estimate as of right now is $122,000. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. The Questions? Finance Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lohr. For Article 23 is to move that the town vote to establish a special purpose stabilization fund for the purchases of ambulances effective for fiscal year 2024. This article is to establish a special purpose stabilization fund for the future purchase of ambulances. We are not funding this account right now. We are not buying an ambulance right now. We are simply setting up this account for future ambulance purchases. Currently, there is an ambulance revolving fund. This fund is used to pay for anything ambulance related, such as EMT, supplies, and other ambulance expenses. Based on revolving fund budget, any extra money would be used from this fund to contribute to the Ambulance Special Purpose Stabilization Fund. This amount could, be, could vary based on ambulance income and expenses every year. Establishing this fund is appropriate for properly saving and planning for future, such as five years, 10 years, 15 years out. Any savings will help offset the future price of the next ambulance. The Finance Committee recommends approval of this article. Okay. Questions, comments? Mr. Gatto. Article 24. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Article 24 uh, transfers 300000 from free cash to the stabilization fund. Passage of this article will bring Mellis to our town goal of 5% of general fund budget expenditures, uh, which we had previously uh, set for the stabilization fund. We do not expect any additional funds will be required into this fund until fiscal year 2024. And funds uh, from this fund are typically appro appropriated for emergency circumstances but can be used as needed. Um, obviously, reaching our goal of 5% will, will have a small but welcome effect on our town's bond rating. Um, we're just talking about, uh, Jody's our resident expert on all things uh, OPEB, Stabilization Fund, and some of her knowledge is permeated to, over this way. And uh, so there's a, you said that it's 5% of expenditures. There's some specific language that, just make sure you reference 
if it says expenditures, fine. I don't think it does. Okay. Um, I would just look at that. I think it's within the operating budget or anyway, somebody will help you find out exactly what that is. And, okay. and it's, Could again, it's devil's in the details. The language. I will double check. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Of the stabilization policy. Right. As written. Yep. What are the, excuse me, on the open, Mi since our, our expert here. Oh, so sorry. I'm not loud enough, apparently. Um, well, okay. Um, since nine, on the OPED, since 95% of the um, money goes towards the retirement health insurance, what does the other 5% go for? No, you're the expert. <laughs> other post employment benefits. Yeah, what are those other post? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I might be asked. Contingency. Yes, they, they're, they're very small. <laughs> and I, I mean, it may be 1% or 2% fall into that other category. Um, so, I mean, we can certainly take a look at that and get back to you on it, but it's virtually all okay. the is the retiree health insurance. Very good. Thank you. Just making sure. Kick, save, and a beauty. Okay. Um, Ms. Reyes, Article 25. Okay, Article 25 is a citizen's petition regarding the enclosed pickleball and tennis courts. This article will appropriate $3.5 million or any other amount thereof for the purpose of designing purchasing and constructing an enclosed sports facility to house four or more combination pickleball and tennis courts to be located at property commonly known as Cassidy Farm, the Braun property, or other such similar location deemed appropriate by the town of Millis. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends dismissal of this article. Do you want me to also put in the reasons why we dismissed it? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Um, Due to, reason, due to reasons including but not limited to the lack of due diligence with regards to going through a process of providing actual proposals or plans related to this petition and adding to the current tax burden for the town at this time. Okay. Um, questions or comments? Um, I would just make sure that you mention that um, it's a citizen's petition, requirements for a citizen's petition. Okay. Um, and then uh, you may go into details on the petition, the lead petitioner, if I would recommend you contact him or her um, for all of the citizen petitions. They may, I would find out if they want to speak to their article and then, and we'll also let the moderator know. So, so, that, so they would do the discussion? They would not do myself? the discussion. Okay. No, you'll, you will do the discussion. Um, We'll talk to the moderators, okay, see what you. they want to yeah, do. Yeah, because I just I've never done yeah. a citizens no, petition before, so I don't. Yeah, but I would mention that citizen, it is a citizen petition, which uh, has gone through the process of being certified by the town clerk, has the required signatures, the standard to have a citizen petition are added to the uh, warrant is ten signatures, I believe. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair. Ms. Garzon. Uh, I'd like a request that we have the actual motions printed for us when it comes to town meeting because mm -hmm. it, our packets end at Article 24 and it would just be helpful if we have the full, all of the articles and our recommended motions. Here. I agree. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I'd be happy to coordinate um, with, um, uh, with Deirdre to make sure that we have your votes and we'll roll those into motions and we'll get those out to you prior to the town meeting. That'd okay. be great. Yeah, I just don't want us to say the wrong mm -hmm. words and then it becomes a brouhaha. Yes, yeah, so in the early part, I, I hesitated to craft motions for the petitions for a whole number of reasons, sure. as you can imagine. But at this point, once you have your recommendations down, we can certainly put those together for you. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Underhill. Um, Article 26, um, this citizen's petition, which requires 10 signatures to be on the warrant, um, considers an alternative already considered and dismissed by the Council on Aging. While this petition illustrates the need for a solution for Millis's growing senior population and the current conditions of the senior center, the plan presented by this petition is a continuation of the current problems faced by our senior center and does not address the needs for larger and multi-use space to provide a better and more varied service to the senior population of Millis. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends dismissal of this article. Okay, questions, comments? 
Mr. Stedman, 27. Article 27 is also a citizen's petition uh, that was uh, appropriately submitted to the board of directors or the select board with the required number of signatures. It would authorize the town to borrow funds in the amount of 2.9 million to restore the Millis train station, also known as the Lansing Millis building, and convert it to municipal offices. This article will preserve a rapidly deteriorating uh, historical building and frees up space in the Veterans Memorial Building. <clears throat> the Finance Committee recommends dismissal of this article. Uh, we did so for several reasons. Uh, as stated before, there was a lack of due diligence. Uh, <clears throat> it had not gone through the Capital Planning Committee. Uh, it will not meet the needs of the seniors. And in order to even have an impact, it has to be considered concurrent with the previous article uh, in order to really generate any significant space. Okay, questions, comments? All right, Jody. So Article 28 was also a citizen's petition that was duly uh, certified and uh, presented as a warrant article uh, for this town meeting. Uh, since this article was uh, presented, the petitioners have requested that it, the article be dismissed at this time uh, to allow the current property owner of Rockland to pursue a third party sale of the property. So um, the Finance Committee um, recommended dismissal of this article due to that request. Okay. Um, any questions or yeah, comments? Just proceed. I don't know how this actually plays out because okay. you have a motion uh, for the article. So we move to accept the article and then we're saying uh, that it should be dismissed. So what will the... Well, we, we, the, the motion we would be to dismiss, likely. Yeah. The motion will be... Okay, that's the way it'll read. Okay. Yep. The motion will say, uh, okay. I move to Finance to Committee moves move to, to dismiss. dismiss. Discussion. Yep. Okay. So the, that you're well, on all three of these. So the select board, yeah, yeah. the select board would have to, wouldn't they have to say the same thing that they support? No, dismiss? no, okay. not at all. Just the select us. board okay. is required to have this on the warrant. I know that. Period. Dot. And they don't. I don't even think that they have to vote on it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're welcome to share an opinion, but Miss <laughs> Harden. Lisa Harden, 56 Walnut Street. I was sort of the one who got the citizen's petition off the ground. So I would probably, um, I expect that I will ask to speak in, uh, not against dismissal, but just to let people know that this is, um, that the people who have proposed the article know that this is going on and we're not gonna pursue it at this time. We may pursue it later if it comes back on the, on the market for the town. To be interested in. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that essentially wraps up um, the. I'm going to close the pre town meeting public hearing. Um, but before I get into um, approving bills and minutes and things like that, I just wanted to give us a couple of notes um, when making motions or more. Actually, motions really is verbatim. There should be no, uh, you know, audibles for the football uh, analogy, no audibles uh, or county options on the um, on reading of the motions. Please read them verbatim. Um, but what I was going to say, especially for the discussion comments, when you say that this this article would do X, Y, Z, I would ask that you please say words to the effect of this article if approved, is intended to, or this article, if approved, would X, Y, Z. Um, because I don't want anybody to take from our discussion, especially since you're not saying how it's, how we recommended. I don't want anybody to be confused that it's the vote, it's their vote, the vote that's about to happen at town meeting, the citizens vote, that uh, that, that happens. So please add in, if approved. Um, please state the source of the funding. Um, if you reference in your discussion, now it should say it in the motion, but if you're referencing funding uh, in your discussion comments, please add the source of the funding, whether that's free cash, whether that's 
borrowing within the operating budget, if that's some other source, free cash, uh, marijuana impact funds, just be specific to the funding source. And then um, the last thing, which is not quite as important, but you know, good to say, good to be clear on it, is that the voting requirements, now typically the moderator would state, would state whether the vote requires a majority vote or two thirds or whatever it is. Um, if you don't hear that um, from the moderator when they, when they synopsize it, and you wouldn't know that, I, I would just state it. State what the, what the voting requirement is, which is in the bottom of the motion in, during your discussion. You can all, and please make sure you sum up at the, at the end of your discussion with how the Finance Committee voted, which I think everybody did, but just to reinforce. reinforce. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Underhill. Um, just a procedural question at town meeting. There's been some confusion in the past where we make a motion mm -hmm. to approve, dismiss, whatever it is. Um, then a citizen comes up to the microphone and makes a counter motion. Mm -hmm. um, but have you discussed this with the moderator? If he's going to consider the motions by the Finance Committee, though that needs to be voted on before any other motions are considered? I you have. That has been a problem in the past. So you asked me if I discussed it with him. No. Okay. Um, and it's at his discretion, and who knows? It could be case by case. Um, I will mention it to him, and I'll try to find out what his intention is if he opts to share it with me prior to our meeting, uh, which is going to be Thursday prior to town meeting at 645. So 645, we'll meet in the whatever room that is, 104 or 106, uh, enter the high school at the main entrance, mm -hmm. go down the hall, and that's what we'll, we'll be. And hopefully I'll have an answer for you there. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, pressing on. Um, we're going to approve some bills. Does the select board want to adjourn? No, they can suffer through this with the rest <laughs> of us. <laughs> um, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, Ms. Underhill. <laughs> I'd like to move to adjourn our select board meeting no. for Wednesday, okay. November 2nd. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn the select board meeting. I'll poll the board. Um, Ellen Rosenfeld? Uh, aye. Craig Schultz? Aye. And I'm an aye, so we are now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Got Chair. Got a babysitter on the line. Until 9.30, though. You're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Garza. Uh, I move we approve the payment of $14.69 uh, to W.B. Mason for supplies and expenses. Second. It's moved, moved and seconded that we approve the payment of $14.69 to W.B. Mason for nameplates. All those in discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Please sign. Mr. Chair. Ms. Garzon. <laughs> I move that we approve the payment of $4,902.30 to Our Town Publishing for the printing of the Finance Committee reports. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee vote to approve the payment of $4,902.30 to Our Town Publishing for printing of the Finance Committee report discussion. I'd just like to say that before people throw that away, they uh, take the time to read it since we went to the expense of writing it, publishing it, and mailing it uh, well over uh, $4,000, $4,900 plus, paint plus postal uh, charges. So <laughs> please take the time. Please come out to uh, town meeting on Thursday and vote. Any further discussion? None heard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Pay the man. There are minutes. Yeah. Mr. Chair? Ms. Garzon. I move that we approve the minutes of October 19th as written. Second. Second. I've been moved and seconded that the committee approve minutes for our meeting of October 19th. Discussion? None heard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, not really, I kind of took it out of order, but we'll go back to it, since I probably didn't. Um, okay, so for town meeting procedures, um, I will get an answer to 
that particular question. Um, either way, you know, you will get, I have discussed that with um, the moderator, Mr. Kenareggi, that the finance committee uh, representative identified will have the first motion. Um, whether they entertain other motions, you know, that's up to him, and I'll try to, I'll try to find that out before an actual vote is taken. Um, in terms of if there's questions on other procedures, you know, now's the time to, to kind of ask those. Um, I think everybody except for Mr. Gatto has gone through this um, here locally on, at our town meeting. Um, just kind of follow the person in front of you and, um, you know, we'll help you. The, peer, the person sitting next to you will help you. It's, you know, it, it could be a gentle elbow or a kick under the table. Uh, we'll figure out, you know, kicks. We'll figure out who's going to. Kathy tripped me one year. We'll figure out who. We'll figure out who's going to second the motions. Um, not a big deal. Don't worry about it. But essentially, I would write down on your um, notes something that I always write down, which I almost forgot, is uh, the letters M, S, D, V, and that's how everything will follow. There's a motion. There's a second. There's discussion, and then there's a vote, and. You just let Mr. Kenareggi, um, you know, go through that. It's his job to to um, keep that rolling, uh, according to you know the home the the town rule, town meeting rules. Um, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gatto. Just on the town meeting procedures and during the discussion portion, is it appropriate to wait for Mr. Kenareggi, the moderator, to ask us to respond to a question, or should we yes. just since we're leading the discussion, yes. just go ahead and answer? Uh, it is appropriate to wait to be recognized, and and I would say, I mean, you know, I don't know how he's going to go on that. That's that's his discretion. Uh, if there's any legal question, it's if it if it has a scent of a legal question, he's not going to ask it. Is my in my experience the moderator typically will defer that to the town attorney who's sitting right next to them and that's where a town attorney will be sitting could go right to select board or the town administrator or the finance director could go right to the citizen the lead citizen uh, the petitioner if that's the case any number of things um, don't be afraid to raise your hand if you have something that's burning that you got from somebody in your research for your discussion raise your hand um, you can get their attention if you feel like there's, I mean, rarely has this happened, but maybe not since Doug Riley left the committee. Uh, if there's something that is really, you're the authority on because you've done so much research or it's something that is important to convey, maybe you forgot to convey it, get the moderator's attention. Mr. Moderator, raise your hand, jump around. Um, if you have, if any of us have concerns or points that you want to make as a citizen, not necessarily as a FinCom rep, Please uh, go down to the mic on the on the floor and and get in line, type of thing. You know, make your make your concern that way. I would encourage you to do that um, if that's a you know if you if you feel strongly enough about it. Um, in your discussion, um, in your discussion write-ups, uh, if anybody didn't hear something that they thought was a salient point that they made during our discussion two weeks ago or tonight, and you didn't hear it talked about, please reach out to the member. You can talk amongst each other. Um, the meeting rules, this, the um, public meeting laws apply to quorum. We can discuss and talk to one another during the week or any other, you know, it doesn't matter when, it's just we need to avoid quorum. Um, so if you have a point that you want to make sure it gets conveyed, reach out. If you want to help, if you have a question, reach out to somebody that, that can help you. Um, Ms. McGinnis. Like to, uh, I'll always refer to the DPW director on my questions. Uh, you know, go to the source sometimes yeah. rather than trying to wing it. 100%, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I echo that. You don't have to be the expert in the article. You know, we have folks who worked on this for a long time, and you can always just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the information that we're conveying is things that we've heard yeah, here, especially. either in written uh, handouts and material that's been provided to us, or in discussion presentations. If you went, if you found some sources of information, I mean, similar. To, I mean, I don't intend to bring these items up that I've been researching, but you know, if if the discussion goes along those lines, then I will because I don't. I, I feel like it's definitely relevant, and I don't. I'm not second guessing the fact that this information's out there, so 
Um, okay. Um, we'll discuss uh, wardrobe after when, once we convene the, the, the meeting or adjourn the meeting. You gotta wear clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it true? Uh, Mr. Okay. Chair? Mr. Stedman. After our vote tonight on the, uh, the senior center, will the motion as written change or will yes. it be? Okay. Yes, it will. In fact, it already somewhat has. I mean, I have a draft. Okay. Um, but That's it fine. will it will change based on our That's reconsideration simple. vote Thanks. and then based on our vote to refer. Okay. 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 I move we adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> I moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nice. Yeah, I will. Can That's I ask right. a question? Yeah, it's one of the citizen petition. I want to sure. ask you. Thank you. I'll see you Thursday.